Well, let's go ahead and turn that around. There we go. Hi, you guys. So this morning, oh, let me put on a bit more light so I'm not so dark. There we go. So this morning I was going to make some rickety uncles, which is something that our family really loves. Um, so how um, I got the recipe when I was uh, back in Young Women, so with our church, and um, they organized a lovely cookbook. And so in the cookbook is a recipe for rickety uncles. Um, Arlene was sweet enough to share that in there. And so, um, so yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and get started. So instead of using cornflakes, um, we've been getting a lot of Cheerios because they've been on sale. So we're gonna use Cheerios instead of cornflakes. And so that's what we start out with, is uh, we do, let me see, four cups of, cor of cornflakes, which will be our Cheerios. And we just set it aside in a separate bowl. So we're gonna use a nice big pot to actually do the cooking on the stove. And I'm just gonna use like a small medium sized bowl to hold the, uh, hold the Cheerios. So go ahead and do four cups. Yes, I often count out loud because I tend to lose count. All right, so, and then it also encourages you to measure out the peanut butter first, but I kind of like to uh, not use multiple cups. So I go ahead and do the, um, the sugar first, actually. So the sugar is just a half cup, and I'm putting it into the pot. So if you want, you can do all your measurements in the half cup, and then you only need the half cup instead of dirtying more more dishes. So um, just a half cup of just white sugar. All right. And then you do one cup of the corn corn syrup. And I just use the, the light corn syrup. And so this is where I, I save it because you need the one cup for doing the peanut butter. And it's easier to get the corn syrup out than all the peanut butter out. So I just find it easier to do it that way. Oh no. All right, just a bit more. All right, you know what? I think that, that ought to be enough because I'm not sure I have fully enough peanut butter, so that ought to work just fine. So go ahead and just use my finger to try and get the edges a little bit better. Just show you how. There you go. And that's that. And then it's mostly cleaned out for being able to use it for peanut butter, so you save on dishes. Gotta clean that up. All right, and then um, and then I go ahead and measure out the peanut butter, and I just leave it in the uh, in the scoop itself, so I don't have to dirty more dishes again. So I'm kind of a fan of that. Let's see, I should have a a butter knife. And like I said, I'm almost out of peanut butter, so I'm just gonna have to scrounge to the bottom. So I'm actually pretty happy that we were able to get to this today. I kind of forgot that um that it was spring break when I set up to do. The, when I, well, when I said I was going to do the live today. And so luckily my husband was sweet enough and happened to have the day off. And so he's taken the kids out to the park to go have some fun so then we could make rickety uncles. Which I'm sure they'll be very happy to have rickety uncles when they get back. <laughs> Alright. And it usually takes a little while to get the whole cup, especially when you're almost out of peanut butter. Alright. Inch by inch. All right, almost there. All right, I'm definitely shy on peanut butter. Keep our fingers crossed, they still stick together well. All right. Looks like that's about all we're gonna get out of here. Probably should grab out a spoon. All right, I'm just gonna quickly grab a spoon and see if I can get just a little bit more out. That ought to work fine. Yeah, I was really worried that there wasn't going to be enough, but I figured we could roll with it and keep our fingers crossed, so that's what we're doing. All right, so as you can see, there is not near enough peanut butter in there, but we're just going to have to work with that today. All right, so then we um, add one teaspoon of vanilla or vanilla extract. All right. Mm -hmm. Don't 
spill too much. It's really fresh. And so if you put in too much, then it would definitely get strong. All right. And so we have our sugar. So um, half a cup of sugar, one teaspoon of vanilla, and the one cup of corn syrup into our pot. And then we're going to bring our pot over to the stove to go and heat it, bring it to a boil. So I'm just going to move you this way. And we're going to put it right on the stove here and set you down there so then you guys can see what's going on here. All right, and so I'm just turning on the stove. Get it going good. And I have my lovely spoon. This is a really old spoon that I stole from my mom's and it's really good and hard. And you want something very sturdy for mixing it because as you add in the cheers and stuff, it will get, um, it will get harder to mix. And uh, yeah, it's even broken, so it's had a lot of love. I'm just gonna mix it in a bit. You don't need to necessarily stir continuously that I found, um, but you do want to make sure that you get it, you know, decently blended as it's, as it's melting there. Right. And then we just kind of stir and wait for it to come to a boil. So it's actually a really simple and really fast. And that's why I thought it might be good to do for one of my first lives since it's always a little nerve wracking to start sharing things in front of people. And so I figure if I start out small, then it'll be easier when I get to some of the bigger projects. All right, so not much bubble in there. Turn it up just a touch. So I have it on, on 8 out of 10 on my temperature right now. And you can hear it going. No bubbles yet. We're gonna... Hi Eva, how are you doing? <laughs> it's good to see you too. <laughs> it's kind of hard to read because you guys are lower so then you, I'm able to show you the pot. You can see somebody else is on but I can't read the name. Okay. Oh, there we go. All right. Sorry we lost you. My connection is not wonderful, but we are starting to get a few bubbles in there. All right. But we definitely want to bring it a little bit more to a boil. Now, I always have problems. It's similar to making um, haystacks or what do other people call those? Um, macaroons, chocolate burrs, mud pies, whatever you call them. I always have a difficult time knowing exactly when to take it off so if any of you guys have a good tip for that I would be more than happy to hear it because mine often either either crumble to bits or they're still super gooey all right so it looks like we're getting a bit of a boil here if you guys can see that in a bit of a boil there so I'm just gonna wait just a little bit longer oh, and I'm gonna about that using a knife stand to hold you, so it's definitely not the most efficient. All right, we're gonna turn that off. And we're gonna add the peanut butter. If I move here, here, I'll turn you just a little bit more so you can see. All right, and then we'll put in the peanut butter. Okay, a little bit of peanut butter that we have. All right. I'm gonna make a mess of this spoon. Go ahead and mix in the peanut butter. And I was just saying that you can use lots of different kinds of cereals. I got the Cheerios in there while we were slightly disconnected. Um, but we can do lots of different cereals. Normally what I like to do is just more plain uh, cereals because if you do sugar, then I suspect it would be super, super sugary. Oh, better grab a hot pad. And I'll just move it over here and then move you guys with me. All right. All right. Sorry about all that disconnecting. We're still trying to figure things out, figure out the good spots in the house for it. All right, so we got it all mixed up. And then I just have, um, what are these called? The baking, baking sheet things that my mother-in-law was sweet enough to get me. And I'll grab two small spoons. So then it's not as much of a mess. So I don't know if you guys can see the pot a little bit out of the way. All right, and so scoop up just a spoon size. And then, I don't know if you can see, oh, we'll do it here. All right, and then you can use the other one to kind of just wipe it off. And so that helps so then you're not getting as messy as I've been getting messy today. All right, so that's mostly it. And then you just put it in the fridge to let it cool and it'll harden up good and strong and uh, yeah you just leave it in the fridge or even in the freezer 
until they're all gone. And you can tell that these ones are a little bit more lighter color because I didn't have quite enough peanut butter. So, but I'm sure they'll still be good. But, uh, but yeah, so it should normally be a little bit darker than this. And it definitely takes a little bit of time. And you can have the kids help. I mean, if you don't mind them getting messy, then they probably could use their hands after being washed, of course. And, uh, and yeah, I'm sure they'd have lots of fun making their own little clusters. And there's no specific sizes because wherever you land them, they'll settle a little bit, but they won't really spread out. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, how easy is that? We actually had an event, um, at an event at my house the other night, and I had planned for my sister-in-law to be able to have a treat, and I felt really bad because I could see that I was running out of time. And I was like, oh, and she's a, she's a gluten-free. And so I was like, how am I gonna figure this out? You know, how can I make something quick enough? And then I thought of these, and actually Cheerios now, at least in the States, I don't know about in Canada there, but in, in the States, Cheerios are usually gluten-free now. So uh, so I was able to whip these together and I was so surprised that I still had enough time to be able to do it. So uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a really easy recipe. But yeah, and that's pretty much it. And then you make room in your fridge and let them harden. And what I'll do is um, I'll go ahead and let them harden and take them off. They should come off the, the baking sheets. I made them on here before, so they should come off really easy. If you don't have the, uh, the liners that I have, you can actually just use wax paper. Sometimes it does get a little bit sticky on there, so that's not as much fun. But, um, but it still works efficiently. Or you can use like plates and stuff like that, you know, just whatever you have handy that it won't stick to. So yeah, so what I'll do is I'll finish these up. I'll put them in the fridge, just doing the same clusters the whole way. Um, this will often make like two large size cookie sheets full. Um, at least that's what I found. Sometimes you can make them taller and so you can get a little bit more room and kind of like make them smaller but taller because they'll just all harden the same so it shouldn't be a problem. Um, so I will uh, finish these up, put them in the fridge, and then I'll post a picture for you guys later to, so you can see them all hardened up and all finished because we're not going to sit around and wait for them to, to harden in the fridge on live. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, if you guys have any questions, then go ahead and ask me. I'll do the best I can. I'm no professional cook. I'm just showing you what I've learned and what I enjoy. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit and hopefully have fun making some rickety uncles of your own. All right, bye you guys.